Welcome to Hope and Healing at Home. Today we are doing masking tape part two. So last week we talked about making our own stamp or prints with masking tape so that once you get the fine details worked out you can make the image over and over and over. We had some fun ideas in the newsletter about how to take that further and be even more creative with it. So if you are interested in more links and more questions and more ideas for how to take the ideas we talk about in these lives a little further, do sign up for the newsletter either in the link in my bio or go to Hope and Healing at Home and that's all spelled out at uh, hopeandhealingathome.com and you can sign up for the newsletter in the link there. So today, exciting news, exciting announcements. I've had a few interviews today really excited about some of the things that are happening in the world about how people have used art to find healing and some fun things going in there so hopefully i have some announcements about that those interviews in a few weeks or so but today playing with masking tape part two i will have links about where i learned some of these ideas from in my newsletter as well as I've got a couple fun announcements, like I said. I'm using frog tape today. Last week I just used regular masking tape, but you could use the blue painter's tape. The goal is to have something that's not too sticky because what you'll end up doing is putting the tape down on your paper, and then you're gonna wanna be able to tear it off without destroying the image. Now I'm tearing this in half because you're gonna get different sides. So when you tear it, you get a fairly straight line, but it has more of an organic kind of wobbly, uneven shape to it. And if you use just this side, you're gonna have a very precise straight line. Either one is totally fine. It just depends on what you're going for. You can tear it into small bits, you can tear it into large bits, and create an image with your masking tape. So probably you can figure out about what I'm going to make here, just from what I've put in here so far. And you can be very precise with it. You can just play, hence the name, playing with masking tape, and be a little less precise about what you create. And wherever you have the masking tape is going to be white paper. Create any image you want. I hadn't planned on making a house. That wasn't my plan. I was gonna make, try to make an animal, but sometimes, you know, art has a way of taking on a mind of its own. And I don't mean that in any creepy way. But that's part of the fun of playing, right? Of just seeing what happens with the art materials that you are using. And, in the moment, what shape feels right? Where do you want to put a line? If you're trying to tear it very finely into small bits, sometimes you might want to rethink what you're doing because sometimes it doesn't want to go in the direction you want. So you might want to just pick out different. Instead of, I was trying to tear out, let me explain that. I was trying to tear out a V to represent a bird. But um, it wasn't wanting to do that, so I just ended up tearing two, two lines, two pieces of the tape instead of the original one. So I'm going to go with this image. So you tear out whatever you'd like with your masking tape, and you tape it on. And I'm because I was doing this a little different than I expected. I'm going to make sure that it's all adhered to the paper because I don't want it to come up. I'm not pushing hard. Just making sure it's adhered on all the edges and nothing's sticking up to catch the art materials that are coming next. So you could use crepaws, you could use paints for this, colored pencil. I think it's more fun if you have something that you can blend a little bit or add water to. Oil pastels will leave a really nice rich color in there. Chalk pastels would be a little bit more powdery. I will go with the water soluble crayons or the neo colors. They're actually water-soluble pastel. What you can do is create any shapes that you want and you can just scribble like once you've got that main bit done you just you scribble out here however you see fit to fill in your paper. 
Doesn't have to be a rhyme or a reason. You can have it make sense or not make sense. You can use traditional colors or untraditional colors. I'm going to try to do a quick example for you so you can see what I'm talking about is one way to playing with masking tape. And again, I'm using my scrap paper here. So these water-soluble neocolors don't exactly respond to water the way they do on some nice mixed media or watercolor paper or a canvas. But essentially what you're going to do is grab some water and a paintbrush once you've got your color down. And you're going to smear the water around and activate your colors. If you use nice paper and not just the scratch paper type of paper, you won't be able to see all of these lines that you can see, they will all dissolve as the water is added. But sometimes the texture is nice to have in there as well. All right, so that's one idea with putting some water in there. And you could do that again with any media that you like. I'm gonna also show you with the chalk pastel pencils. If you wanted a softer look, it's nice because you're staying in the lines without staying in the lines, if that makes sense. So you put your color down. You don't have to worry about being accurate at all. And then I'm going to just take my finger. If you didn't want to get any colors on your fingers, you could use paper towel on your fingers. And you're gonna rub. Chalk pastels are great because they just smear so nice. If you were using oil pastels, same idea. You get a little bit of a richer color. And I smeared from light to dark because obviously my finger's going to get dirty with whatever I've got on here. And if I were then to take this finger and here, I'll do it. If I rub on something that's light, I'm gonna transfer the color and get a different color. And if I wanted to make these darker, I can always add another layer. It's kind of fun to not have to worry about staying in the lines. Just get to scribble. same thing. Just smear them. They're a little bit more bold. You can use a different finger for every single color if you don't want them to blend together at all. And then I'm going to let that sit for a moment and let the water finish drying. Something else you can do with the masking tape is you could make marks. So these are ink tense pencils. When you get these wet, uh, they are permanent, unlike watercolor or the neocolor things. You can sometimes reactivate certain things when you add another layer of water. But these, once they're dry, once they're wet and then dry, they are gonna stay right where you left them. So just play around with marks. If you had one of the blocks or something thicker, you can make a, a bigger mark. You could hold it like at the end of the pencil line, just kind of twist your finger and get sort of random marks. And you'll, you're probably wondering, well, what does this have to do with masking tape? Well, you'll see in, in just a minute here. So you put some marks down. You could get things wet or not get them wet, totally up to you. And then you could take your masking tape and create lines over your work. They don't have to make sense. Again, you can just play, see what happens. 
You can do this in different layers, anything you like. So again, gently just pressing down to make sure all the edges are down on your paper. And then start making more marks. See how my pencil caught there? That wasn't good. That wasn't down all the way. And you can just keep layering it, and you never quite know what's going to happen. But wherever the tape is, it's going to protect what is underneath the tape because you're not going to get another mark on top of it. Wherever I've got the tape, I'm not this mark here won't be where that tape is. So whatever pattern, whatever color is under the tape is going to be protected. So this is kind of a fun way just to experiment with the ways you hold a pencil, the marks you like to make. You could rip your masking tape into shapes. They do not have to be lines. There's this really great artist, Stanka Kordic. She, I took a class of hers called Maneuvering Through Mystery through Kara Bullock's art school. And she does these amazing paintings and she does layers and then she will take masking tape and mask over different portions of her paint that she likes and then continue with the painting and continue with the painting then add a layer of masking tape and continue with the painting and then later at different points she'll pull up a piece and adjust and see what's going on under the different layers of masking tape and i found it to be quite a fascinating lesson highly encourage you to give it a try play with different materials see what happens so because i have some water soluble i'm just going to experiment a little and see what happens if i get that wet I want to clean it every once in a while because some of those colors are going to blend together and maybe you don't want that. People use a masking fluid a lot in watercolor to maintain an area of pure whiteness. All sorts of different ways to mask something off, play with color, and then reveal what is left behind when you pull that up. So one other thing along those lines, not math masking tape, but along these lines is to take an image that you like and you could create a silhouette. So this is a little bit tedious in cutting things out, but you can use them as like a stencil and you could fill in everything behind it if you wanted to, or just hold it in place and color off of it. This you'll want to be a little bit gentle. You want to make sure you hold it in place. It probably is something that you could get that you could put on your paper and hold her in place or hold your stencil in place. I do not have that, so I'm just going for a little bit of a tedious way of doing it today. Creating like a silhouette. And it's only tedious because I don't have any way to keep this image in place except with my fingers. You don't have to use the same colors, I just am going back to the same colors because they are appealing to me today for whatever reason. Did any of you ever make silhouette art when you were in school or any time in your life? We had a teacher who did silhouettes every year of us and she also did them of her kids and it was really a fun way to see growth and change and to put a portrait of people on a wall without actually putting a portrait of people on the wall. <laughs> I did a project once in school of the Northern Lights and I didn't want to draw all the buildings and everything in black so I masked them off and then did all the painting and everything around it and then pulled the pieces of paper up. I'm gonna be a little careful because this is not actually attached to the paper. 
So I wanna make sure I go from the piece of paper out. Or I'm gonna just keep moving it like that and ruin the effect. And then showing this technique just as I let some of that water dry. I didn't want you to be staring at nothing here. And while I blend this, I'm gonna tell you about some exciting guests I have coming up next week. Bevy Lebray, really amazing artist and art therapist, mountain climber, rock climber, friend of mine. I traveled to the Swiss Alps with her. Just a really inspiring person. She is going to come next week and do an art prompt with us, a journal prompt of say no to say yes, decoding our security programming to free up our hearts. So I'm really excited about that one. She's got several workshops coming up at Grand Marais. If anybody is from Minnesota, North Woods, that is an awesome place to go visit. So she's got a process painting workshop there. And then she's also got um, this art journaling one day workshop. So the process painting workshop is two days the, in October and the art journaling one is one day. So she's got a one day workshop and a two day workshop up there and it is worth a trip. If you wanna do something really kind for yourself, worth investing in a weekend trip up to Grand Marais for her workshops. I went to one one year and it was just amazing. All right, so now is the time for the reveal of the masking tape. So she will, Bevy will be here next week. And the following week, Jenna is going to be here doing an art journaling activity with us around art journaling as a conversation with God. So that will be very fun. And I'll put links to connect with them and see more of their work in the newsletter. And I'm also going to put links to the teachers, the art classes that I took recently that reminded me of playing with masking tape as a way to form reliefs on your paper and play around. So it's kind of nice when you don't have complete control of something to see what is left behind when you pull something up instead of only laying stuff down and playing with different materials, not worrying about how something's going to turn out from the get-go. You can't always have a plan as to what it's going to end up like. Sometimes it just happens and there's something really fun about that and of course you could then keep adding you don't have to stop there this one's still wet so we'll see how it pulls up for us see what happens when you work in layers when you work with water when you work with dry you could pull some of these up and then add some more marks and then pull some more of them up or add some more you can just see what happens don't be afraid to experiment uh, one of the fallacies in adding some water with the frog tape at least is it does appear to bleed in under the edge of the tape in some places. And I don't know if you just saw that, but because I tore it off while this was still wet, the paper's a little fragile and some of the paper came off of the tape. If I had been patient and waited for it to fully dry, the tape would come right off the paper. But trying to get this done. See here, the um, water went under that frog tape a bit. So having blue tape or regular masking tape would probably prevent that. But it leaves kind of a cool, I kind of enjoy it as well. So it adds some more of that mystery. Not exactly sure how it's going to turn out. Again, the water went under that one. So part of that's a bit of a fun mystery to the project. And we learn, right? It might be a mistake. So also we can learn from it, a step we can learn from. So there you go. Playing with masking tape part two. A couple different ways of using masking tape to form reliefs and do some silhouettes, have layers of marks, lines, and colors. And you could add to these, you could have them be standalone images, whatever you would like. So hopefully that inspires you to try something new to play around with masking tape or some materials that you have on hand. And I hope you will stop in next week to hear from Bevy and her great art journaling prompt of saying no in order to say yes and be more authentically who you are in line with yourself. And then the following week is Jenna, art journaling as a conversation with God. And then in my newsletter, I will have some prompts to take 
this idea, playing with masking tape a little bit further, along with links to both of those ladies and to the artist who reminded me of this idea, as well as Stanka Cortex information, so you can see some of her inspiring art. So take care, have a great week!